So what would be, so we're eating like what, 10, 12, 12%. So what would be a kind of a good percentage to aim for, for protein? Well, pro, so protein's weird. It's kind of on a U-shaped curve in terms of how much you're going to eat. If you, um, <clears throat> if you go really, 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 really low protein, you actually start eating less again. So, uh, you know, people who go on a potato mono diet, you do the potato hack, you're just going to eat potatoes. You know, potatoes are like 5% protein. And at these very low protein intakes, people actually do eat way less food and they are way thinner and they weigh less. Or if you're a vegan, uh, raw vegan, fruititarian, and all you eat is fruit, which is, you know, maybe 5% protein. Again, you're just going to automatically eat less, be thinner, um, of course, all the tissues in your body weigh less, including the ones that should have a lot of protein, like your muscle and your bones. So we do see a lot of sarcopenia, osteopenia, and these very, very low protein zones. But that is a U-shaped curve, uh, where on the other end of the curve, uh, all of your bodybuilders are eating, you know, 35% protein by calories, 40% protein by calories, 50% protein by calories. You can feed any animal a uh, 50% protein diet, and it will just get thinner and thinner and thinner on an ad lib diet where it's allowed to eat as much as possible because you just can't overeat. You just cannot eat that much protein. You will just stop eating. If I just give you, you know, 10 pounds of skinless chicken breast, you're going to eat like two chicken breasts and you're just done eating. And that's how protein works. The satiety per calorie is off the charts. And so, um, Basically, you know, you've got these extreme high protein percents that all of your bodybuilders and bikini models and aesthetic people are at, and they're automatically eating way less and it's easier for them to be thinner. Or you've got these uh, raw vegan fruitarians at this super low protein of, you know, 5%. They're also very thin. They don't weigh very much. Uh, the cost of weight gain goes up exponentially because you don't have enough protein to put on new tissue. So they're also very thin, but they have a very low lean mass like muscle and bone. And then uh, it's a U-shaped curve where the worst is about 10% protein. So if you're designing like an obesogenic rat chow or you're trying to fatten up a lab animal, the very, very most, uh, you want about 10% protein is the bottom of the U-shaped curve for, for maximal fattening. And that's most of your human junk foods, your uh, peanut butter cups, your um, your um, candy bars, your cookies, your pizza, your donuts, all of your junk foods are high carb and high fat. They're, you know, usually uh, 40, 50 percent carb, 40, 50 percent fat, and then 10 percent protein. And these are the things that animals overeat the most. A high energy density, high carb, high fat, 10 percent ish protein is peak fattening, like maximum uh, obesogenic rat chow formula. And that's almost where we're at in America. We've just been steadily sliding downhill. What we've been doing is protein's been going down, uh, fat's been going up, and carbs and fat are kind of rebalancing at this optimal fattening zone where you're just equal parts fat, carbs, and then a low 10% protein. So that's the very worst. The very, very worst would be 45% carb, 45% fat, 10% protein, really high energy density. Uh, peanut butter cups is like the like absolute peak fattening. Like you can just fatten up any omnivore mammal by feeding them this. Uh, so what would be better for humans? Well, I like, you know, 30% protein is a really good goal. 30% uh, protein by calories. This is close to the worldwide hunter gather macronutrient estimates. Uh, we have studies showing that if you can get protein to 30% of your calories, you reverse 100% of prediabetes with no other intervention. It's incredibly powerful. Like this is ridiculously powerful. It's the single biggest change you could make to your diet to just automatically eat less, be thinner and have better body composition and metabolic health. So my advice to most people is try to get protein to at least 20% of your calories and better yet would be 30% of your calories. Um, you know, for example, if you look at the, um, National Weight Loss Registry in the U.S., which keeps track of anyone who's lost a, a certain amount of weight and kept it off for years successfully. Uh, the one thing they all have in common is they've managed to drag protein up to at least 20% of their calories, which is a really good level for someone who's finally starting to lose weight instead of gain weight. And then again, if you can crank that up to 30%, you're basically going to reverse all your pre-diabetics, radically improved body composition. If you can get protein to 40% of your calories, you're pretty much going to be a look like a bodybuilder. You just basically can't overeat 
at these percentages. And all of your permanently lean bodybuilder types are hanging out at around 40% protein. So that's just kind of how it works. It's just a lever that can drive ad lib caloric intake up or down, body composition up or down. Um, most people are unaware of all of this, but it's something that should just be common knowledge and it's not. So you talk about protein percent, which is your percent of calories. So in, do you ever think of in terms of like protein requirements in terms of grams per body mass. And I think you used uh, like lean body rather than like total body mass. Is, is that right? Right, right. Absolutely right. So the protein percent is an important concept because if you're trying to improve your body composition, you have to eat more protein and less non-protein energy carbon fats at the exact same time. And so the PE ratio or the protein percent is the best way to think about that. So um, if all your foods are, you know, 30% protein, you're just going to automatically eat the right amount of protein and the right amount of calories. You just eat to satiety. You don't even have to worry about it. But yeah, protein percent gets a little weird if you're talking about absolute protein requirements. So like, for example, if I'm, you know, uh, running ultra marathons and I'm, you know, running hundred miles a day and I'm, you know, burning 8,000 calories, uh, now, you know, my absolute protein requirement in grams is the same, but I'm eating, you know, so much, so much energy and burning it off that my protein percent goes way down, which is, which is, you know, fine in that circumstance, which is why it is important to look at absolute protein in grams. And like you said, um, I'm frequently looking at grams of protein as a goal in, in terms of ideal body weight. <clears throat> so my advice to most people is to eat one gram per pound of ideal body weight, lean body weight, um, uh, stage body weight, what you would weigh if you were just completely ripped and jacked and at your absolute ideal for your height. So, you know, for example, I'm a five foot 10 male. And if you look up on tables, you know, what is the absolute ideal weight for a five foot 10 male? It'll say, you know, 160 pounds. And uh, that's how many grams of protein I would want to target a day, 160 grams of protein. So uh, I highly recommend a roughly a one gram per pound uh, of ideal body weight for your height or, you know, reference body weight or what you should weigh if you were just completely lean and totally healthy. So if you know, if you're 600 pounds, I'm not telling you to eat 600 grams of protein a day. I'm telling you to eat the, you know, 180 grams of protein, uh, uh one gram per pound of the 180 pounds you should weigh for your height or something like that. If that makes sense. Yes. Yes. No, that makes sense. Uh, so on your website, you have this this wonderful graph that shows kind of like the, I guess the, the protein energy value for a, a bunch of different foods. And so I, can you talk through like, like that, how that graph works? Yeah, absolutely. So and anyone can see it by going to proteinpercent.com. If you go to proteinpercent.com uh, or at, at my website, tednaman.com, you can, there's a link to it there. But um, you're basically looking at a graph that's sort of a vector diagram with protein, uh, grams of protein or calories of protein on the y-axis, calories of non-protein energy, that's basically net carbs and fat on the x-axis. And you can see this vector, you can enter foods and see a vector of essentially protein percentage by calories of whatever food you're looking at. So way up at the pure protein would be like egg whites and whey powder. And then, you know, pure carbs and fats would be sugar and oil. And uh, then your, you know, hunter gatherer foods uh, are kind of right in the middle. That's your, you just go ahead and kill an animal and eat the whole thing. So like, you know, lean meat and uh, fruits and vegetables type thing. Uh, and then, you know, higher are things like green vegetables are actually very high protein percentage. You know, asparagus is 45% protein and spinach is 40% protein and all of your lettuce or leafy greens are 40 something percent protein. Um, uh, and then you have like, you can easily look things up and see, uh, you know, what's better and what's worse. And, uh, uh, you know, once you realize that the standard American diet is down at like 12 and a half percent protein, you start seeing all those things that we eat way, way down here. It's like all your grains and your sugars and your starches and your cereal and your pasta and your junk food and your donuts and your pizza and all the stuff we eat is way down in this very, very low protein zone. And the problem with that is, you know, let's say you need, 150 grams of protein a day to not be hungry, 
but you're eating French fries, which are potatoes and oil, and they're 6% protein, you have to eat the French fries out to here to get enough protein to not be hungry. And you'd be way better off just cranking that dial up and basically eating, you know, a chicken breast and a salad or something. And you're going to get the same amount of protein for way less non-protein energy. And that's basically how it works. 